this is being felt across the country of Canada, I think is a testament to the unique relationship that the country has with the sport. And it's something I think a lot of our audience probably is not aware of. I mean, you guys both played sports at the very highest level, but you didn't move away from your home at the age of 15 and move across the country to live with another family right. in order to be raised in the sport. So it's something that was unique to the culture that we wanted to give our audience an understanding of. Yeah, to hear that the dynamics of how they're raised by the sport, in the sports, were, were fascinating to me. And, you know, what a horrible loss. Any horrible tragedy. Yeah, I mean, I learned, I learned a lot just in that, that short interview. Obviously, it's a tragedy, no question about it. But just what these kids go through as far as hockey and coming up in hockey is just it's tremendous. So that being said, we will now uh, switch gears and go back to our, our top story, which happens to take us to Philadelphia where the hottest team in the NBA currently resides. That's crazy to say, considering the beginning of the season, Jalen didn't believe me. 76ers picked up their 14th straight win yesterday. I didn't. I'm Magic late to the party. That's all right. As long as you come to the party. Win was also their 50th of the season, which clinched the team's first 50-win season since way back AI in the 2001 days. Not to be lost in all this has to be that that 14-game win streak matches the longest in franchise history tied with the 82-83 team that won a championship. Bowl, bowl, bowl. They are now in the driver's seat for the three seed. They have a chance to have the longest win streak ever Ooh. to end a season. Okay. Can we all believe that they have what it takes to be a serious threat in these Eastern Conference playoffs? Michelle Beater, the answer is yes. And by the way, shout to Sam Hinkie, because when we talk about trust in the process, he hired Brett Brown, he drafted Joel Embiid, he drafted Dario Saric. Yeah. And these are key figures in what this team is doing. And if they don't play the Cleveland Cavaliers in the second round and Joel Embiid is expected to come back healthy, I don't see a team that can beat the Philadelphia 76ers. And it's just fascinating that they went from being a team talking about the process to one that's possibly going to be in the conference finals this season. Here's the way I look at it. There's sort of a short-term and big-picture view of the Sixers. What they can do this season in the playoffs – I don't know. There's a part of me that still needs to see that. But they have two transcendent players. Yep. Assuming Joel Embiid stays healthy, and this injury right now, it may hit in the face, so it's not the kind of thing that you worry about long term. If he's healthy and Simmons is healthy, I'll say it right now, there isn't a better one-two young punch in the NBA than that. Take anybody you want. Take the two kids in Minnesota. Take anybody you want. There's no one you take ahead of those two guys, right? So the future couldn't be I, I brighter. See what, I see what you're saying, but I like Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. They're really good at basketball. Oh, I, but I'm talking about young guys. Oh, right. I, I don't mean they're the best two right. in the league. Don't get me wrong. And if, if that's the way but that of the, sounded. Of the new crop. But uh, agree. There's agreed. a lot of teams that have a bunch of good young players. I wouldn't trade those two for any other team. I agree with transcendent talents. And how about this? They fit so well together. Ben Simmons is a 6'10 guy playing point guard. He can't shoot threes. Yet you can't stop him from getting to the basket. He's getting triple doubles. And then Joel Embiid gives you the points on the post. He shoots the three. He can pass. He can rebound. He blocks shots. And guess what? We haven't mentioned the guy that went number one in this year's draft. Markel Fultz. If he turns out to be a player... I mean, the sky's the limit for their future. I think the one thing that, that really fascinates me about the 76ers is they're ahead of schedule, so they're playing with oh, yeah. house money right now. So think about it. If you're a young player on that team, you're thinking, I don't have anything to lose right now. It doesn't matter going into the playoffs. I can just let it go, whereas some of these, some of these other teams with veteran players, and they hear, i.e., like the Toronto Raptors. Like We've been talking about them. Every, it seems like every year how they just get tight and choke in the playoffs. But the Philadelphia 76ers, they, just, they can play free. I mean, they look like they're having fun, too. Yeah. I, I love this story. This is, I had to pick a storyline going in. Obviously, then, you know, what the, the unknowns and what's going to happen. This is by far my favorite story. And also, there's going to be a lot of talk about what happens in the offseason. And I don't think a guy like LeBron James is going to go play with them. But they are an exciting team that now players are going to go want, run with them for the future because it's really bright. All right, that was our top story. By the way, the Sixers have the Hawks and the Bucks left on their schedule. So that's at least one win. Win. Mm, sorry. Uh, time to get up and go. It's where we get you caught up on everything else that you may or may not have missed over the weekend. And, of course, the big story has to be the Masters. 27-year-old Patrick Reed. It was tough at the end. Ricky Fowler and Jordan Spieth made a run, but it wasn't enough. Took home his first major title at the Masters. Sunk a par putt on 18. Finished at 15 under. Speed, by the way, tied for the lowest final round score at the Masters with a 64 yesterday. Speed was unbelievable yesterday. It had one little tiny moment where his drive ticks the tree 
on 18, although Curtis Strange yelled at me earlier this morning for putting it that way as though I was blaming the tree and not blaming like, the yeah, player. It did sound like that. I get it, but he, he was practically perfect yesterday. Fowler was sensational, and this guy held them all off. Give a lot of credit to Patrick Reed. He held off some ridiculous charges.